Can changing your sleep change your face? Okay, I'm not a model. But let's see what I used to look like in 2018 to 2021. I always looked tired, I struggled to build muscle, and I really struggled to lose body fat. I'd constantly get breakouts on my face, and my mood was very much reflected in the way I looked in these pictures. I used to have sleep scores like this in 2021. During that time, my average sleep score on Garmin was 68 out of 100. These are my sleep scores for 2023, and these are my sleep scores for 2024. In 2024, my average sleep score is 85. That is more than a 25% increase in my sleep scores. I'm nearly 37 now. I went from barely being able to do a pull-up to doing Murphs wearing a 10 kilogram vest, ran over 14 Spartan races, and being able to do my first muscle-ups. In this video, I just asked a simple question. Does sleep have a major factor on the way you look? We'll cover body fat related to sleep, nasal breathing and mewing, skin quality and sleep, and mood. So number one, body fat and sleep. You may not know this, but sleep is one of the best fat losing secrets that exists. Sleep impacts two key hormones, ghrelin and leptin. When we sleep badly, the balance of these goes the wrong way, making us hungrier and slowing down our metabolism. In this 2022 study, it showed that the control group who slept less on average consumed an extra 270 calories per day. That's like having an extra Mars bar or a pack of Cheetos every single day. In this paper, it showed that people who undersleep also seem more likely to snack and eat high fat foods. And the results from this study are honestly incredible. Sleep curtailment decreased a fraction of weight loss as fat by 55%. I'd say it's pretty safe to say sleep will impact diet and fat loss, which has major impact on how we look. When it comes to skin and sleep, first of all, for full disclosure, my skin's obviously not perfect. You can see imperfections, maybe it's part of the light thing, but it's just reality, like very few of us have perfect skin. However, compared to what it used to be like before and now, it's like two different worlds. I've gone from a point where I was having like breakouts in the every single day, uh, like little cuts appearing out of nowhere, to more or less having the same skin every single day. And keep in mind, I'm a lot older now than I was three years ago, so I'm not a young chicken, whatever the um, saying should be. But are there studies that actually support this? Well, in short, yes, there's several studies linking skin quality and sleep. So just check out this study in particular. In this study, it showed that good sleepers had significantly lower intrinsic skin aging, as well as many other benefits to the people who slept well compared to those who didn't. The Sleep Foundation, which is generally a very good source, has a really interesting blog about this, and you'll see sleep can impact both wrinkles, puffy eyes, and hair. And on topic of hair, here's my hairline back in 2020. I'm sorry that you have to see this, but as you can see, it really looks like I'm about to go bold in these old pictures. Looking at my hair now, the reality is my hairline's not perfect, but it's definitely better than it was. And I think sleep can be accredited to some of that. The studies that show this, which I'm going to put on screen right now. Yeah, despite this evidence, you'll nearly never see anybody talking about sleep when it comes to hair loss. If you look at all the YouTube videos about hair loss, I guarantee it's not said once, which it's pretty surprising given the actual evidence out there. And just logically speaking, if sleep improves skin, it will improve hair. Now the fun one. Let's talk about mewing and nasal breathing. Now I learned about mewing about three, four years ago. And let's just be totally honest, the science on it just isn't there. So the only evidence we really have for mewing is basically anecdotal, if that. There's a load of controversy. A lot of doctors don't agree with it. So just be careful what you listen to when it comes to mewing. But there is at least enough information out there to suggest that breathing through our mouths isn't good for us. And there can be an impact on how we look in the long term if we are breathing a certain way. And just to back this up, watch this short clip of me speaking with Karen Parker, who's a nasal breathing expert. So as you mouth breathe, the face gets longer and everything just kind of, it's like a little pup tent. It just starts collapsing. And you can see it in the bite. You can even see it in the deviation of the nose. I mean, you do get facial changes over time, slowly. That is true. And if you look at Dr. Harvold in his study back in 1982, he plugged up the noses of Reese's, Reese's monkeys 
for a certain amount of time. And because they were mouth breathers, the face became longer and longer and longer. They had that maxillary deficiency and, and vertical, the vertical growth height was changed. But when he unblocked the nose, then their facial structure went back to normal. So where does this all tie in with sleep? Well, I have mild sleep apnea and I was sleeping on my back. So as a byproduct, I was snoring, which basically meant I was breathing through my mouth. This has most likely been happening for up to 15 years. What this basically meant was I was doing a lot of mouth breathing. To make things even worse, I had a deviated septum. This means that one of my nostrils was obstructed. This led to my nose getting blocked a lot, me not having great nasal breathing, ultimately meaning I was probably breathing from my mouth even more. I had this treated recently, but for a long time, I'd have a super heavy, loud nasal breathing, which you could even maybe hear in some of my older YouTube videos. So what did I do about all of this? Well, first of all, I did start using mouth tape. If you want to learn more about mouth tape, I recommend you check out my other video that's just about it. It is a very controversial topic, but there are some reasons why it might help, but just really educate yourself on this one. In terms of what I did for my nose, I got septoplasty surgery in 2023, which basically fixed my nasal breathing. Since then, I've not had a single blocked nose. And if you are curious to learn more about septoplasty, you can check out this video here. All in all, this basically means that my tongue is more often on the roof of my mouth. So I'm basically doing some basic mewing more often than I was before. I believe that my jawline and my face has a slightly different structure to what it used to have, and that could be part of the reason why that's the case. It could have been due to the changes in how I breathe. We'll probably not really know the reality of that for another four or five years, because these things take a long time. However, I think overall, it's definitely worth looking at mewing and your breathing when it comes to your sleep, and it can impact how you look in theory. Now, last but not least, it's just mood. Let's just be honest, no one looks good when they are sad. You can tell a fake smile from a mile away. It just impacts everything in your life. And real charisma really does come across from how you feel, how you express yourself. And yeah, if, if you're just always tired, your mood sucks. You're not going to look good in pictures, right? It's just kind of pretty obvious when we think about it. The analogy that I like to put across to people is that you with an amazing night's sleep versus you with a bad night's sleep two different people. So imagine that being played out day in, day out over months and years. This can seriously impact the way you look, the way you feel and everything. So in conclusion, I, I really strongly believe sleep will impact the way you look. And not just the days you sleep well, but over many months and years. Was it a key factor in my transformation? Yes, absolutely no doubt about that. Now that said, it's obvious things like haircut, your mental health, going to the gym, fashion, losing body fat, skincare, amongst many things impacts the way you look. Sleep on its own ain't gonna change everything. And also I'm first to put my hand up, I'm not exactly giga chairs right now, but an improvement is improvement. So if you're looking to improve your life, do a transformation, perhaps sleep should be part of that strategy. So let me know in the comments what worked for you and also if you agree with my assessment. P.S. Um, I'm not looking to make anyone out there feel anxious about the way they look or to worry about their sleep. But what I do want to do is get it out there that you do have more control of your life than you realize. And sleep is a factor in that. It's something to think of it in a positive way rather than seeing it as something bad or something that is making you worse. It's just a tool to make your life better. And obviously, if you want any help in that journey, subscribe and check the pinned comment where I've got a free sleep assessment for anyone who wants to learn a bit more about their sleep. Mwah.